Hello, my name is Shannon Nicole Kringen. I am a female on this planet. It is now August 10th, 2020. And I want to talk about grief, post-traumatic stress disorder, and sadness, and death. I hope I'm allowed to talk about this. I'm going to be careful what I say um, because there are some people that are being erased from the internet if they say certain things that are controversial. So I hope that I'm allowed to be a real human being with a heart and a soul and a brain that's awake and alert. Life is fragile and yet we are strong. My dad suffered something traumatic a few nights ago and my mom, my mom, my parents divorced when I was four. Uh, so they've not been together for many years, um, but I'm still connected to both of them. And both my parents are highly sensitive. And I would say they probably both have post-traumatic stress disorder from stressful traumatic events. Uh, my grandfather died in a car crash when my mom was in her early 20s and my mother was estranged from my grandmother. So my mother had kind of a messed up relationship. She was close to her dad and then he died in a car crash. Um, and both my parents were not close to their mothers. Both of my grandmothers neglected my mother and my father. Uh, it, interesting, um, my parents dated and broke up and then got back together and then created me and then got married because of the pregnancy and tried to make it work for four years and then divorced. Um, my mom and dad are very different from each other, so they didn't really belong to stay together. But it's interesting that both of them had mothers who were, my mom, my grandma on my mom's side was domineering and pushy and bossy and kind of macho. Like she acted kind of like a man that didn't want to talk about feelings. My grandmother was very masculine on my mom's side of the family. She was really into animals and riding horses and she was really good with animals. She loved animals and was really good with them. But with people, she was bossy and pushy and domineering and critical. So my mom didn't feel loved by her mother and she recently confided in me again, this has been happening off and on for years. So my mom, I think that this whole medical and financial crisis that we're in right now is bringing up a lot of issues for a lot of people. Whatever your issues are, are coming to the surface because now we have, our lives have slowed down <clears throat> and we're all home more often. I'm gonna drink my iced coffee iced black coffee with a teeny bit of raw honey melted into it. A lot of our issues are coming to the surface and I'm an only child and I'm dating a guy who comes from a very different family. He, he's not, the guy that I'm dating is not highly sensitive like me so he doesn't understand and he comes from a family whose parents stayed together for their whole lives they never divorced. His father passed away um, recently, a few years, a couple years ago, and it was sad. But his dad had a long life, and he was in his 80s, and his parents stayed together for their whole life. And his mother is still alive and healthy, and in I think in her 80s as well. Um, so he comes from a very different family. He has a bunch of he has a few siblings. Um, he comes from a family that's together, and they don't have a bunch of trauma in their family. So I come from a family that has a lot of trauma. So, um, and I was raised in a way that my mom put me in alternative school, which was really good. But the main point of this video is to say that I'm feeling very unsupported. I feel very uncomfortable um, because the guy that I'm dating doesn't understand what I'm going through and he doesn't know how to help. And you know, he's, he's a good person, um, but he doesn't relate at all. And he doesn't know how to give emotional support at all, other than saying, you're okay, you're a good person. I mean, I'm happy that he thinks I'm a good person and he says I'm okay, but um, 
it's, I feel very alone right now and I have a therapist, but she's, she's not a good therapist. Let me just say, I appreciate that she's a therapist and it's, it's free therapy I get through my health insurance and I'm grateful. Um, but I only check in with her once a month. I guess I could call the clinic and ask for more. I, I think I need to call the clinic and ask for a different therapist because she's no help to me at all. Um, I don't click with her at all. So I don't really have a therapist that is helpful to me right now. So I need to rely on myself. I live alone with my cat. I like living alone. I'm an introvert. Um, but my dad just talked to me and he's going to go. His cats were killed on Friday night just a couple, whatever, a few nights ago. Um, whatever day that was, Friday, my cat, my dad's two cats, Fiona and Aaron, were killed viciously by a dog. And it's a very weird freak occurrence. Long story. He lives in a neighborhood with leash rules. And this dog had gotten out a few times. And my dad didn't know that his neighbor, five houses down, had a very vicious dog. That And this is the third time the dog had gotten out. And my dad didn't know this. And my dad generally supervised his cats at all times when they were outside, but he had let them out one more time for the night. And then he went back in to do something and then he was going to come back out. And then he heard dog barking and he ran out there and it was too late. And he witnessed, I won't go into the, the gory details, but he witnessed both of his cats suffering. One of them died at the scene and he couldn't save it. And the second cat got a horrible injury, which I won't tell you the details of, but he rushed the second cat to the vet and then they had to put the cat to sleep because the, the vet assured my dad that the injuries were severe and unfixable and the poor cat was probably in a lot of pain. So my dad decided to let the second cat go. And the thing, the thing about it now is that my dad is a very sensitive person. He said the night before the cats died, he was lying on his driveway looking up at the stars and his each cat was lying you know cuddling next to him on the side of him because he lives in Florida so it's nice and warm so he was lying out on a warm night outside in his yard and enjoying the stars and the cats and he was feeling so grateful and thankful that he had these great cats in his life and that they all loved each other and they had a good life together and then 24 hours later his cats were dead and he didn't save, he couldn't save them. And he is beating himself up like crazy. He's very obsessive compulsive in his thoughts. And so am I, I inherited a tendency towards obsessive compulsive thinking. Um, so my dad is going to go to a grief counselor and a, a post-traumatic stress disorder, a person that has a technique in dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder. Cause my dad keeps replaying the death of his cats in his head over and over and over. Now, when my cats died, I took all the cat stuff that was around and I like the toys and the food and the litter box, all the things associated with my cats because I had Tux who died. I had him euthanized because he was very ill and he was like 20 years old and he was very ill, long story, but it was still traumatic and sad. And so I took all of his stuff and I put it away. I cleaned it all and put it in the closet because I didn't want to look at it anymore. But my dad isn't doing that. My dad said he's not ready. He's still seeing the hair follicles of his cats around the house and he doesn't want to vacuum them up. So he's really seriously grieving. Um, and when my stepfather died, a few years ago, my stepfather suddenly died and my mom witnessed it. Um, <clears throat> and... Grief tends to trigger other grief. I'm now thinking about a cat that I had when I was 10 that was squished by a car and I witnessed it and I couldn't save the cat. And I was like, stop, stop, stop. And the guy ran over my cat. Long story, it was horrible. So my dad telling me about the grief of his cats has triggered the memory of the grief of watching one of my cats die. And then my cat Stella had liver failure and I... Um, gave her uh, uh, subcutaneous fluid treatments for the last two weeks of her life. It didn't really help. I, it's a long story, but poor Stella suffered a lot because I, I put her through a lot of medical treatments to try to save her and it didn't work. And now I regret that because I think Stella suffered more than she needed to at the end of her life. And it would have been more peaceful if she was home with me. Now my cat Kisun is okay. 
he's mildly diabetic and he was sick for a few weeks ago for a week or two and now he seems back to normal. So I think he's okay and I'm not going to take him to the vet because he seems really good right now. So I don't want to stress him out even further. Um, I think sometimes people um, over-medicalize their, their pets and that's none of my business. But me personally, I sometimes feel like cats and dogs suffer more if you give them lots and lots of medical treatments and the, the best thing to do is love them and feed them the healthiest food possible and that's my my main method with my cat but um, this isn't for me to get put on trial for how I treat my cat but my dad is now beating himself up and so this is it's really uncomfortable to be the daughter of these two parents uh, my mother and my father my mom just told me something about my grandmother's narcissism has has your grandmother's narcissism affected you as much as it's affected me she asked me in, in a text message and I I got along better with my grandmother than my mom did so I don't see my grandma as the hardcore narcissist that my mom sees her as but my mom was raised by her and felt not loved. My mom did not, I think both my parents did not really feel loved by their mothers. Their mothers were not affectionate. Um, my dad was severely neglected by his mother. His mother once said to him when he was seven, do you know where babies come from? And he said, no, mommy, where do babies come from? And she said, men's lust and greed and it's like okay that's not a thing to tell a seven-year-old but <laughs> that's just one of the things my grandmother told my dad when he was a cute little boy so that's pretty sad but my dad didn't understand what that even meant so he was too young to even understand that and there's all kinds of other things my dad suffered as well so both my parents were neglected. My grandmother just dominated my mom and told her what she was going to do and she insisted that my mom ride horses even though my mom did not want to ride horses. That was my grandma's thing. My mom did not want to ride horses but she was expected to just ride horses with her mom and just be a cute little sidekick on riding horses. Um, so my, my mom says she feels objectified like my grandmother treated her like an object and she just doesn't feel loved or nurtured. And my grandmother died in 2007. Both my grandmothers are passed away. Um, both my grandfathers passed away tragically. Um, my dad's dad died of a heart attack or a stroke and he had, he suffered two or three of them. And then the third one killed him. And my dad witnessed that and was traumatized by that. Um, my grandfather was a drinker and a smoker and, and uh, never exercised and so my dad is the opposite my dad doesn't smoke he doesn't drink he obsessively exercises which is great because he's as fit as Mick Jagger my dad is about the same age as Mick Jagger in his 70s and he's literally as fit as Mick Jagger like he could run around on stage with Mick and keep up with him so literally so um, that's cool my dad is a very talented athlete actually he was a tennis teacher so my dad is very talented he wrote comedy he wrote folk music he just never did it professionally um, he was a tennis teacher so my dad is very talented he's also very emotionally fragile and very sensitive and so now he's really traumatized by his cats dying and he calls me every day and I listen and I'm very patient and I listen and I want to be supportive and loving and for me what works for me to grieve the loss of a cat is to take all of their stuff out clean it all and then put it away in a closet because my dad is probably going to adopt other cats but he's going to supervise them more carefully 24 7 that from now on he says and so he'll make sure that nothing ever happens to them um, nothing like this has ever happened my dad is very good with animals he's had many pets and he's very good with them but this was just a horrible unfortunate freak occurrence that he wasn't supervising them at the time and that was bad timing on that so very um, a rare occurrence for a dog to be a, a kind of a wild hunting type dog to just be running through the streets that's another thing my boyfriend said to me there's no such thing as a hunting dog so I was telling you know my dad used the phrase hunting dog 
Okay, so that's my dad's phrase, and that's fine with me. My boyfriend informed me there's no such thing as a hunting dog. And, you know, he's criticizing the way I'm explaining the story. And so I don't need that. That doesn't help me at all to be criticized for how I talk about what my dad said to me about his cats dying. I need some kind of, like, support. And my dad, my boyfriend is like, well, that's just my opinion. Blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, that's fine. You're, that's your opinion. But it's not particularly nice to hear that when, when I'm just – sharing a story that my dad told me that was that was those were his words so this dog behaved as if it was trained to hunt and kill okay that's how the dog behaved um um so okay so that was very traumatic for my dad and the neighbor was crying about it but the neighbor didn't admit to my dad that the this is the third time that his dog has gotten out and his dog has attacked other dogs apparently never killed any other animals this is the first time the dog actually killed two animals. So pretty bad situation. So um, so I'm just telling you this in this video right here. This is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring in Seattle. And I'm telling you this because um, it's I'm an only child of two parents that are very emotionally wounded. Um, my mom um, turned to spirituality to help her deal with and transcend. And then the... the, the um, trauma of losing her dad in her early 20s they were really close and then she was estranged from her dad towards the end of his life because my grandparents had a horrible divorce when my mom was a teenager and it was just apparently a horrible dramatic situation and everybody was mad at everybody and nobody was resolving anything and my grandparents divorced and married each other's ex-spouses which created a lot of drama in the family and everyone was weirded out by that and I wasn't even born yet so um so this was weird drama that happened in my mom's side of the family. And so my mom and dad both, so my mom recently confided in me because I think the situation we're in right now is triggering whatever grief my mom has about her parents and her family situation. And then my dad is obviously, my dad was doing really well with this whole medical um, financial thing. He's retired and he's financially doing really well in his retirement and he's been working out and, and you know, he, he's still allowed to go to his gym and um, he rides his bike every day. And so my dad has been doing really well with this, but now his cats died. And so now he's really, really upset, uh, not because of the medical and financial crisis we're in, but because of his cats being killed viciously a few days ago. So my dad is very wounded and upset right now. And my, so he's going to go to two counselors. For me, it would help to take all the cat stuff out of the house or put it in the spare bedroom and clean and feng shui the house, you know, change the energy because he keeps looking at all the cat stuff and wanting them to be there, which I think is, is not uh, very nurturing for him to do to himself. Um, he has photos of the cats he can keep forever to remember them. Um, so his, his grief, you know, he says he'll ask the grief counselor if they recommend that or not. It's like, okay, if I were him, I would be listening to my own self. But so my dad wants to do whatever the grief counselors tell him to do. There's a grief counselor and a post-traumatic stress disorder. He's going to see two counselors. So he's going to do whatever they recommend. Me personally, my style of grieving, if my cats were um, attacked by a dog and killed, I only have one cat, but if that happened to one of my cats, I would, or both of my cats or whatever, I would be taking the stuff, the cat stuff out of my apartment or put it in a closet or something. And I would be cleaning everything and I would be saying prayers and I would be crying and I would be, um, doing videos and writing journal entries or whatever. But my dad has a different style. So I need to respect that he has his own style. He has his own way of grieving and he needs to do whatever works for him. Um, I feel like when I talk to him, I feel like, what about my, f I mean, this is about him. This isn't about me, but then I have to take care of myself. And so I'm an only child of this mother and this father, and I don't have any siblings. I wish I had a brother or sister that I could confide in about all of this, but I don't. And the guy that I'm dating is not particularly sensitive and he doesn't understand. He just thinks, uh, I don't know. He just doesn't relate. So he doesn't have uh, the kind of connection with animals that my mom and dad and I have. So he doesn't understand. So I can't really receive any support from the guy that I'm dating. That's just not, we don't have that kind of relationship. I've been dating him for five years, but we're very different. And we really aren't compatible in a deep way. 
Um, we're friends and we share affection and sexuality and I'm grateful for that. But I won't say that we're soulmates and we're not the loves of each other's lives. That's just reality. We're not. Um, I haven't met that person. If there's some soulmate in the world for me, I have not met them yet as far as I know. So, oh well, that's okay. Um, I mostly like to be by myself anyway. But I am feeling uh, a sense of wanting some kind of support right now. I know I need to give myself support. Um, I don't know if professional, if counseling will even help me. I have a therapist and it's not helping. So I guess I just wanted to do this video about the challenge of being an only child of extremely emotionally wounded parents. Uh, my mom is a talented artist. Uh, she's not making her art right now, but she has a real, a, a beautiful art studio and lots of art supplies and she works in metal and clay. She's very talented. She's very intellectually gifted. She's very smart. She is into philosophy and Advaita Vedanta non-duality, uh, Ramana Maharshi and Krishnamurti and really interesting people from India. Um, she's not a religious person that like joins any religion, but she's just a free thinker, philosopher, um, who does Gyana yoga and stuff like that. And so my mom is a very interesting person, but she's also very traumatized by what happened with her mom and her dad. And she has two brothers, but they don't really get along. And then my dad um, mostly raised himself and my grandmother even danced with Frank Sinatra. My, my grandfather used to throw parties in Southern California. My dad went to Burbank High School and was photographed by a famous photographer named Peter Gallen. So my dad comes from a very interesting childhood background and my grandmother danced with Frank Sinatra because my grandfather used to throw parties. He promoted jazz musicians, my grandfather, in Southern California in the 30s or 40s, or I don't know when that was, but I guess that was the 30s and 40s. Um, long story. So that's an interesting little tidbit from my dad's side of the family. Um, but there's, a, my dad is a very sensitive man. He's very, very sensitive. And so he's very smart and very sensitive. So both my parents are highly sensitive, intelligent people. And I'm sure that I was meant to be born from them. Um, so that I'm probably meant to do this video right now. So um, listening to Tom Petty and Tori Amos really helps me. They are my service musicians, let's just say. Um, thank you, Tom Petty, and thank you, Tori Amos. Rest in peace, Tom Petty. I uh, hope Tori Amos sticks around for many, many decades to come. I'm excited to hear her next album. So I just want to wrap this up now. This video is pretty long. Um, good. I didn't say anything controversial that will get me banned anywhere, hopefully. So um, uh, I'm going to do another video that's about more controversial topics about medical stuff, but I'm not going to say anything like that now. But this is just about reaching out for support in this grief, in this time of grief, um, coming from a parent's, uh, an only child. I don't have any kids. I decided not to have a kid in my 20s. I terminated a pregnancy in my 20s. Very sad story, but whatever. I did what I did. I made the best choice at the time. I sometimes regret it or wonder what if, but I'll never know. So um, I'm just here. And again, it's August 10th, 2020. So I wish you all health and love and peace. And I'm going to go for a nature walk and take care of myself. I'm determined to focus on health and not get, not get um, dragged into the drama of fear. Um, and and um, I do feel sad about my dad's cats dying. I feel sad about my mom and dad's issues and my own issues, my own woundedness. Um, I wish I had happier relationships, but I don't. But they say whatever your consciousness is, your relationships match your consciousness. So apparently... I'm not compatible with myself, apparently, because that's what I'm, I'm witnessing. I have a few friends that see eye to eye with me, um, but sadly they live in Tacoma and that's like 35 miles away from me. So um, I'll figure it out. I have a creative writing group I belong to. I really love that. I model from home every Friday night and I have creative writing on Wednesday and Saturday, uh, one online and one in person in a park outside. So um I got to watch the sunset last night with my boyfriend um, at Golden Gardens near Seattle. It was really beautiful. Um, it wasn't real romantic because we don't really have a super lovey-dovey romantic connection, but it was nice. We both appreciate nature. He took a couple cool photos of me in my silhouette dancing, and um, he's a good photographer. He doesn't really like taking pictures of me um, because he does it professionally. 
So we don't really have like an amazing connection in that way, but I'm a good model and he's a good photographer. It's too bad we don't have the kind of chemistry where he likes to take photos of me. That would be a lot more fun than it is, but oh well. Um, so I'm sad about that. Um, if I could clone myself, then I could take amazing pictures of myself, but I guess I could work more with my tripod and my auto timer. Um, I have three cam, I have four cameras. I have a webcam, I have a waterproof camera, I have a Canon Super Zoom, and I have a, a smartphone. I have a Pixel XL, which takes really nice photos and videos, and I really love the, um, slow motion video. I've been doing all kinds of cool slow motion videos. So I'm an artist and a model. ShannonKringa.com is my website. I have a Patreon. I have um, a bunch of different things. Just look up GoddessKringShannonKringen.com. GoddessKringShannonKringen. I have music and poetry and visual art. Thanks for listening. Bye for now. Good luck to everyone.